All right, everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use your open PGP keys or GPG, however you like to say it, keys to SSH into another service, maybe an EC2 box, that could be to your GitHub, whatever you want. Uh, we're gonna use our GPG keys to do SSH instead of the traditional SSH key method. And so I just wanna go through a whole quick video, it shouldn't take very long, start to finish of how to, to do this. Uh, hopefully can help somebody out there. Before I get started though, shout out to Luke. You know why. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get started here, we're gonna do all of this in Docker so you can follow along at home if you want. And this is the command we're gonna run. If you have Docker installed on your machine, it's just docker run dash IT. That means we're gonna be in interactive mode dash dash RM. Remove the container when we're done so it cleans everything up. And then we're just gonna use the Debian bookworm slim image and we're gonna run bin bash in that. So if I hit enter here, I'm now in a container. I can do all my Linux C command things uh, just like I was on a Linux machine, which is what this video will focus on. Windows people, sorry. The instructions should be really similar if you're on a Mac. So the first thing we need to do is install a couple of things. So let's do apt update. And let's do apt install. We need to install um, open PGB, PGP. Uh, we're gonna install proc PS. Uh, I wanna install nano, cause we'll probably use that. Uh, what was the other thing I wanna install? Let's start with those and we'll install more things as needed. Okay, so pretty simple. All right. And so what we're gonna do, oh, that was the other thing we need to install. We need to install SSH because it's not installed by default in this container. So let's do apt install open SSH client. Okay, and what I wanna make sure is that SSH is set up correctly here uh, and running. And so if I do like SSH add dash L, yeah, there's no agent and I think it was something like, we need to run eval uh, ssh agent.s, sort of. Uh, we don't wanna do this yet. Okay, because we're gonna do some rewiring of SSH. Um, so we'll do that. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, I believe we should be able to run like ox and we see that there is no SSH agent running and that's okay for now. Um, let's go through and create our, our, our keys. We'll come back to this. <clears throat> All right, so let's do GPG, you can just do GPG dash version, show that we have it installed. We're running 2.2.40. And now let's do full generate key. Now. I would normally assume that you've already created your keys. And so I'm gonna go through and do a very quick, dirty, insecure version of doing these keys just to, to demonstrate here. But um, this is how we would do it. We're gonna create an RSA. We're gonna make it 4096. Doesn't expire. Yes. Real name, test McTester, test at test.com. Again, this is all just so we have something to work with. Okay, great. Now we're going to do a GPG expert edit key. Uh, so you can see by default, we have this um, uh, signing uh, and uh, oh, I forget what the C stands for, um, and an encrypting key, but we need an authentication key for uh, SSH. So we're gonna do an add key, and we're gonna pick an RSA with our own capabilities, that's option eight. And you can see by default, it has the sign and encrypt, but we're gonna turn those off by doing S. Now you'll see it only has encrypt. We're gonna do E, now it has nothing. A, now we have just the authenticate action. So we're gonna do a Q to quit. I'm gonna change the size to 4096. 
I always turn it up to 11. Rendu does not expire for now. And again, this is where you would you would set actual expiries and, and things like that. Do a revocation key. Um, the C stands for certification, by the way. I just remembered that while I was typing. Uh, yes, yes. Needs our passphrase. Okay, great. Now we're going to save it. Now if we do a GPG uh, dash K, <clears throat> you can see now, great, we have our identity, test McTester, an encryption key, an authentication key. And so now we are ready. Uh, we have a key that we can use for SSH authentication. Okay. But what we need to do is we, do a, we need to do a little bit of setup on our machine so that we can rewire SSH to use GPG for key access. And so typically the way I've done this in the past is I always forget how to do it. The instructions for SSHing into something say, here's, here's the commands you run to generate an SSH key. It creates like a, an ID pub, an RSA file in your .SSH folder on Linux. And then you do a bunch of things and that gives you SSH access. We're gonna do a similar thing, but instead of creating those keys and then never using them again, uh, my typical flow was every time I needed one, I'd create a new one because I you know, had changed machines or lost the old key. Um, these GPG keys that we've created in this series of posts that I've made, you can keep forever until they're compromised. You just keep renewing them. And so we're gonna use those keys, that passphrase to SSH into other services. And so to do that, we have to rewire SSH so that it looks, the SSH agent looks at the GPG agent for key information. So it's not very difficult. Uh, we just have to add a few uh, things to a couple of files. So the first one is uh, if you do an ls.gnupg, uh, this is your GPG, or your gnupg folder. It's got a bunch of stuff in it. Um, what it doesn't have by default is a configuration file. So we're going to add one uh, at just, oops, dot, UPG, and this is just called gpgagent.conf. And all we need to add in here is this setting, enable SSH support to tell it, hey, uh, we're gonna use you for SSH. So we'll go ahead and save that. The next thing we need to do is we need to seed the agent with the key that we want to use. And we're gonna need the key grip for that. So we just do gpg k uh, with key grip. And this will show all those keys again, same thing that it showed up here, but you'll notice now it has this key grip information with each one. We want our authentication key. So I'm gonna grab its key grip. And then we're gonna add this to another file in the dash GNU GPG folder called SSH control. And literally all I got to do is drop that in there and say, hey, this is the key I want to use for SSH authentication. Okay, we're going to save that. Great. Now, because we are on Docker, <clears throat> we need to do a couple of things here. I'm not sure if this one's necessary, but when I was playing around with this earlier, um, I had a hard time having it prompt me for my passphrase, so we're going to export that. I did not have to run these on my main Pop! OS Linux driver. Um, and then before we restart that, uh, let's see. Well, we may have to run this twice, but we'll run it now anyway. GPG connect agent date startup tty okay all right so the next thing we need to do is um <clears throat> we need to add something to our bash rc file we're not going to do that here because i'm already in the terminal i'm, I'm never going to restart this terminal because i'm in a docker container but you would uh, you know, add this to your bash RC file or your bash underscore aliases, however you like to do it, or equivalent, you know, depending on the terminal program you use, there's there's a there's a startup script that launches every time you launch a new session. You want to put this in that. And 
Um, before we do that, however, uh, again, because we're in a Docker container, I'm going to do a print env. You notice not a whole lot going on. Very simple. Now we're going to start SSH. Just to show that again, I have the GPG agent running, but there's no SSH agent running. So I need to do SSH agent. And then it'll tell you, like, here's the SSH auth sock, the socket. Um, and I believe, I don't know that, that that gets added automatically. It does if you eval it, but we didn't. So you notice we have no, um, typically what you'll do is you'll run an eval on this and it'll add these to your environment. But we don't need to do that because for our SSS, our SSH auth socket, we don't want to use the SSH agent. We want to use the GPG agent. And so to handle that, uh, we have to run a command. I'm just going to copy it. I'll paste it here. Okay. And all it's doing is it's evaluating this GPG conf listers agent SSH socket, and then it puts it into your environment. And so now if we do a print and, and this is all in the blog post that I put on my website uh, that I'll link in the description. So you can copy and paste these commands. Now, if we look at this, we have the SSH auth socket as our GPG agent versus what the SSH agent would have set it as, which is, you know, itself. Okay, now if we run PS aux, we should see that we have an SSH running, we have the GPG agent running, and uh, I think that is all we need to wire everything up. Now to see if this is working, all you have to do is say SSH add dash L, and this will list your SSH keys. Perfect. And so what this tells us um, because I've not added, like if I ls, I don't even have a .ssh folder. So like this isn't pulling any other keys. This is pulling my key, my GPG key that we just created. Um, and so great. SSH says, I know about your key. Uh, that's what I will use to SSH into another service. So everything is now set up. And now the great thing about this is all you have to do at this point is give your public key to whatever service that you want to log into. And so what I just did is I went over to Amazon AWS. I created an EC2 instance, just a bare bones Linux EC2 instance. Took me about one minute. And then uh, let me just drag this over here. Um, right here. This was from testing earlier, but this is this is like the web um version of the of logging in so i'm logged into that box that i created i'm going to clear i'm going to do a cat on home.ssh authorized keys so on any box that you need to get into ec2 instance jump box um, github you can give them your ssh key you're going to give them your public key and in the case of like ec2 instance all we have to do is add it to this authorized keys file now this was me testing earlier. And so what I'm gonna do is just do a nano um, dot authorized, what am I doing? Dot SSH, authorized keys. Same thing as before, I'm gonna come down to this next line. I'm gonna come back over to my terminal here and I'm gonna run SSH add dash L, this time capital L. Uh, and you'll see the difference in output. This is the public key. And so all I do is I grab the entire thing, I copy it, and then I'm just gonna paste it right here. You'll see, here's my new SSH. I'm now adding this new Docker container that I've just messed with. I'm gonna exit, I'm gonna save it. Okay, now that it's added to my authorized keys, let's just, um, you know, for fun, let's do something like echo test into test.txt. Um, now you can see we have it. At test. Great. Uh, so I'm going to take this and move it out of the way again. All right. And now I'm in my Docker machine here and I want to uh, SSH into that EC2 instance. Well, uh, all I have to do 
is I'm going to grab from over here the the name, like the full name of the, the box. All I should have to do is say SSH and that ec2-user at a long thing. You may have a public um, identifier for this, but this I just copied this out of the EC2 configuration stuff. Um, I'll delete the instance after we're done with the video here. And it should, if we've done everything right, uh, it'll say this is, uh, do you want to add this fingerprint for this remote machine? Yes. It's going to ask for our passphrase. Now this is the GPG passphrase that we set up on the key. And we're in. Amazon Linux 2023. If we ls right here, you'll see we have test.text. Let's cat it. Pretty cool, right? And so in just, I don't know how long we've been filming here, 16 minutes, not even, because I've blabbered a little bit at the beginning. Uh, we've got SSH working through our GPG keys. And so it's really that simple. Again, a couple of these steps I didn't even need to do on my Linux machine because uh, it, you know, Docker is a little bit of a special animal in that case, but it's really a matter of having your keys created, having an authentication key, um, making sure GPG is aware of which key you want to use for SSH and that SSH is enabled, and then rewiring the SSH agent so it looks at the GPG agent for your key information. And at that point, you can just print out that public key, give that to anybody who wants to give you access to their services or servers, and you should be all set to have SSH access. So hopefully uh, you found that uh, helpful and instructive. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the comments below. Happy to help. Otherwise, have a great day.